Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into this week's edition of the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Thursday, June the 15th, 2023, and uh, Auburn is on top of the recruiting world. We're going to get to all that in just a minute because we've got two of the best to talk about it with. Mr. J. Head, Mr. Cole Pinkston will be with us shortly, but Mr. J. Head is here now. How about you, Mr. J. Head? How about you, brother? Big couple of days on the plains. You alluded to it. There's a funny word called momentum. This Auburn recruiting staff has it. I mean, I'm going to, I'm getting ready to talk about it with you. I'm going to enjoy hearing what Cole has to say. He's been the pointy tip of the spear for all of this. So mm. just really looking forward to this show. Mm. Um, and, and the feedback that we get. Cole is on assignment. He is at the Auburn uh, camp today. This is Thursday again. This is Thursday. Camp's going on 7 on 7. Uh, Demarcus Friedrich and his teammates are there. Perry Thompson and his teammates, teammates are there. Schley County, uh, Schley County, however you pronounce it, Julius Solomon. Those guys are at Auburn as well. Cole will be joining the show from there here shortly. Uh, before we get in depth in all of this, man, we want to um, let you know hey, today, is the best day to get your house on the market in Auburn or Alabama, uh, in Auburn or Opelika in Lee County. And we got a five star realtor here for you, big dog. Five star realtor Jessica Antris with the Talents Group. Give her a call 334 704 4442. Dude, she is fantastic. And I'm telling you, if you want to sell, she is the best seller agent you will find. I speak from personal experience. Uh, let's see. Well, she had my house uh, sold before we went on the market, that fell through. Then she had my house sold three hours onto the market. Dude, she's fantastic, oh. dude. She knows how to do it. She knows how to stage it. She knows how to market it. She knows how to price it, which is even more important than you would ever imagine. Uh, so she can do it all, folks. I'm telling you, she is five-star. Give her a call. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. And uh, tell them we sent you. All right. J-Head, locker stuffing. Whew. We're seeing it, folks. Just a little bit. Now, hey, big time. Let me, let me catch everybody up. If you, unless you have been under a rock, you know that four star Jack, uh, uh, outside linebacker, we should say, because he has mentioned pl playing inside, right? He has. Okay. So, what does it say linebacker? Four star linebacker Joseph Phillips from Booker T. Washington, Tuskegee, was going to commit to Georgia. We kind of handed, oh, I think we've talked about it openly last week on the show. Cole was kind of going back and forth on his early prediction. I said, I'm going to be wrong. There's no way Auburn can let this happen. I'm, so I'm going to be wrong if he goes to Georgia. Uh, and I was. Tuesday night, he was going to commit to Georgia. Hugh Freeze, OTV, says, let me get in there real quick, big dog. Mm. 24 hours later, he's publicly disclosing his commitment to Auburn. How's that feel, Jay Head? I think for those of us that have watched Auburn, and, and let's unpack this here. For those of us that have watched Auburn for the last four recruiting cycles, to finally get back in one, to get one against Georgia and Kirby Smart, who by all accounts is the preeminent recruiting head coach in the country right now. I don't think anybody will debate that Georgia has been a top three recruiting program for his almost his entire tenure of being there. Um, and for us to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, for Hugh Freeze to say, okay, you're not about to come into my backyard and big boy me. Let's set our feet, close the gate, go looking for a fight. And we won that recruiting battle. And for this staff, it means a ton. It is an absolute uh, statement win. And I don't think there's any other way to put it. Is it an absolute statement win and a shot across the bow to the rest of the SEC that Auburn's here to play, guys. This isn't, you know what I mean, what we've been the last two years. This is Auburn now. This is what we can be. This is what we will be. And for those Georgia fans that are listening in today, hi, welcome. Like and subscribe. I'm sure this is not going to be the last time you're here this week. <laughs> listen, this is the statement wins we were talking about Hugh Freeze was going to have to have. And listen, yeah. if this guy commits to Georgia today or yesterday when he – I talked to him last night. He said, Jeffrey, I was committing. I said, man, I heard it was – I said, it was. I heard it was UGA all day yesterday. And he goes, it was. I was going to commit to UGA Tuesday. I remember, he. I want somebody to go track this timeline because y'all don't know how, how important OTV was right here. You don't know – you better go thank your your boosters, your donors, and all that. Go go, go thank Brett Whiteside and those guys. Also thank the coaches because they, get, they kept them in this. Yes. Because 
He Joe Phillips went to Athens June the second. Um, on an official visit, he came home. He was all Georgia. He came to Auburn. Remember the day he came to Auburn? Kind of an unofficial surprise visit. Cole yeah. talked about it, and Cole was like, "Well, you know, I don't know, man. I was going to change my pick to Georgia. Now I'm not so sure. I'm going to hold off on it." So he tells me today that's on that visit. I want you to tell me what day that visit was, and then tell me what day Hugh Freeze released the OTV video of 2024's Are Making Announcements Now Donate to OTV. He same, had th- yeah, same day or within a day. Wasn't it? I knew it was something, dude. I knew it was related. But you go uh, do the timeline on that. Let's do the timeline on when Joe Phillips came to Auburn, when, uh, when Hugh Freeze made that video, and then I think within the week, he was going to commit to Georgia. OTV said, let me get in there real quick, big dog. How about you? And he said, how about you? And committed last night to Auburn and then publicly announced it today. That's big boy recruiting. And we yes. can openly talk about Auburn bought this kid. I mean, it, 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 somebody was going to. Jeffrey, it's just it's part of the game now, right? It, 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 NIL is a part of recruiting now. Now, will that change? Will, you know, will Congress get involved and help change some of these guidelines and make it where the NCAA can kind of alter that somewhat? Maybe. But right now, it's a part of the game, and it's a huge part of the story. Now, I think that Joseph Phillips was always interested in Auburn. I will say that. But to say that NIL wasn't a huge part of the equation for him would be a bold-faced lie, and we would not do – you know, our listeners and subscribers justice by otherwise. So let's just call it what it is. Now, anybody that is trying to discredit this as a win for Auburn and say that Georgia wasn't recruiting the kid or he slid on their board or anything of that nature, Rusty Manziel of the Georgia on three side is one of the absolute best in the business. Okay. He has done it for a long time at a high level. I have a Mm. lot of respect for him. Mm. If you don't believe us, believe him. And in his words, the buzz was all Georgia. They brought him in for an OV. They had, they had a high opinion of him, and they were pushing for him. And this was a move by Auburn and this staff. And we talk about reading the room all the time, right, knowing what's going on in the background. This coaching staff was able to figure out what was going on in the background. They were able to resolve that situation, move forward, and get a kid that probably should have always been committed to Auburn. We talked about there are going to be two types of commitments in this class that needs to be for Auburn. It needs to be the statement wins. You need to be beating Georgia head-to-head. You need to be beating Alabama head-to-head. How many of those guys can you get in this class? This is the first class. We don't know. But you got to have some. Yes. you got to have the in-state guys. you got to keep the in-state guys from going to LSU, from Tennessee to Clemson. Uh, you, you've got to have that um, – You've got to get out of state guys that want to go to that their in state schools want. You got to beat Florida for Florida kids. You got to beat Florida State for Florida kids. You got to beat Miami for Florida, South Florida kids. And what has Auburn done this this week with three different commitments? They've done it all. They yes. made a statement win over Georgia. They've got Kinsley Falston, the four star defensive back from Naples, over all those Florida schools. You've got uh, Bryce Kane over Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin keeping yes. the in-state kid from going out of state. Three big commitments for Auburn. I think they're up to the top 15 class now with eight commitments. Uh, we've already talked about Walker White being another statement win. Real quick, Fat Burnett, Zach on the back, just told us that he has tweeted that his recruitment's locked in. He's done. Amon Lane has done the same thing in the past few days. Uh, you're starting to see some things happening, man. This is momentum, as Jay had talked about, and Cole's just riding it right on into the show. How about you, big dog? What's up? I didn't know I was on camera yet. Oh, yeah. We saw, we, we saw you picking your nose. Oh, man. <laughs> Cole Pinkston, ladies and gentlemen, man of the hour. Hollywood. Look mm. at it. Y'all. Too cool, dude. I don't know, man. I don't know. We want maybe to get... I, did, you, did y'all think maybe I just forgot to change it? Did y'all ever, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cole is alluding to his February 18th. Yes. 14th. Valentine's Day. Oh, love. Wow. Mm. Love is in the air. Been a card to Joseph Phillips and his wife. I like it, man. Mm. <laughs> so Cole pulls Joseph Phillips. Um, and Cole, listen, 
Jay and I have been gushing over this because, I mean, it, I think it's Owen Papo was the last guy I can remember Auburn beating Georgia head to head for. Zeke Walker was the last one. Oh, two. okay. Was yeah. that the same class? Different class. So it, Owen was the class before with Bo Nix. The following class was Zeke Walker. Okay. Was that Rodney still? Yes. Yeah. There Rodney, you go. Dark Rodney Rodney Garner is the last coach to be able to beat Georgia. Um, and I guess uh, who, who recruited Owen? That was Trav. Travis. Travis William. T. Will and Rodney. There you go. Two of the best recruiters Auburn's had in the last 20 years. Two of the best recruiters. So, Cole, your thoughts on Joe Phillips, big dog? Man, uh, I, you know, well, I, I'm here right now. I'm here at Auburn in the facility. They, they got the uh, 707 going on. And, uh, man, it was like uh, – it, it was like the shot heard around the world, man. Everybody in here knew what happened, when it happened. Um, you know, coaches were, were celebrating. Coach Hugh Freeze was walking around and, and, and meeting and greeting, and people were telling him, congratulations, man, that was a big one, that was a big one, that kind of thing. It, it's just uh, that was much needed, guys, much needed. I mean, you had to win one of those. How long? Has it, I mean, you're just talking about the guys, but it seems like longer than that. When it does. You were able to beat a Georgia, Bama, somebody like that of that stature. And look, Georgia wanted this guy, guys. He really wanted – they really wanted Joe Phillips in their class. Pretty good fit for what they do. Um, you know, just one of those freak athletes that you can sort of plug in a few places. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at Ron Roberts' scheme, and me and Jayhead, we, we've talked about this. Joe Phillips, I mean, he's, he's the guy because you can put him inside or outside. Doesn't matter. He, he can do it both. And I think – Whatever happened uh, when he was here Thursday, last Thursday, a week ago today, after all the buzz came out about Georgia after his official visit, whatever happened that day, they closed the deal. They straight up closed the deal. It was. I, I thought it was interesting. You know what he told me about that trip? That's when he told Hugh Freeze he's going to Georgia. And, yep. and, and that's when Hugh Freeze was like, well, hold on. All right? And, and so yep. – it, it, uh, I, I want to I, I get him on a show yeah. to, to get him to talk about this timeline. Because, Cole, right. what, I, what Jed Hatt and I were just talking about was that day, either either the day of or the day after he left, Hugh Freeze made that OTV video of 2024s are making their decision. So that was the day Joe Phillips told Hugh Freeze, I'm leaning Georgia. And Hugh Freeze was go, goes, hey, OTV, hey, donors, we need your money. Yeah. We need you. And a week later, he's committed to Auburn. And I, yeah. I wonder if his timeline was – because he told me Tuesday. I, I, I'm guessing it was this past Tuesday. What's today, Thursday? That's the way I understood it. Tuesday night he said he was going to commit to Georgia. Wednesday he gets a call from OTV, I believe, and changes, his, changes the whole tune. Unless he meant it was last Tuesday he was going to commit to Georgia, visits Auburn on Thursday. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm Either way, up. it was last Tuesday. It was last Tuesday. Yeah, because so everything the past. But even Chad Simmons told me, dude, it was. I'm telling you, Tuesday night. I think it was this Tuesday. Tuesday Chad Simmons told me last night. I, was, I had quotes for Georgia. He called me today mm -hmm. and said I got quotes for Auburn. Yeah. It was. I'll it, tell that, you what. That, that was how big it was. Just a, a behind the scenes on on why I did keep the pick in, and and I wanted to give a you know like a daily update. Hey, this is how I'm feeling today. Because it was changing daily. I mean, it really was. It was Georgia one minute, and then I'm here in Auburn. Then I'm yeah. here in Georgia again. But my source had he told me, uh, you know, I think this gonna is that a final commitment decision could be made Thursday, which is today. And yes. I, I learned that about maybe this past weekend. Um, don't change your pick for Auburn. He said, mm -hmm. right now it seems like Georgia. Everybody's probably gonna change their pick, but hey, just hold on to it. Uh, I would wait till the last minute if I were you. Mm. And and last minute, if I had heard that that Georgia had the momentum, I would have changed it. But that was not the case. Man, what a week of what a, a week of recruiting. Jay Head and I were talking about this, Cole. Um, what about the official visitors that you've talked to? You yeah, talk about the the the, the June tenth, ninth, and tenth. Those guys. Um, we saw Cam Coleman leave out of here this morning and didn't get a chance to talk to him before he left. He left at like six o'clock. He wanted to get back for his team's workout at eight. And, uh, but I was told, man, 
Auburn really likes where they are. They're, we are where we, we, we should be. That's what I was told. And two guys that I think uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, but we, you know, Joe Phillips and Cam Coleman, in my opinion, are the two guys that Auburn cannot afford to lose, no matter what. Uh, I don't know what your war chest looks like, but divide it into two and make sure these guys are signed. I, I think the word you used on Joe Phillips and Cam Coleman was unacceptable. Unacceptable. <laughs> Can't yep. lose those guys. It is unacceptable if you were to lose. And listen, it would have been. I would have been on this show right now had he committed to Georgia saying this is unacceptable. Uh, it's unacceptable from you know from the coaches, from the OTV. This cannot happen. It, it can't happen. If uh, if you want to flip the script, this cannot happen. Jay Head, let me know. You, you, you're boiling out of there. Ah, look at him. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think even in our text thread between the three of us, it had an expletive and then unacceptable was what was said in the text thread. That wasn't me. I don't no. know. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I listen, you're right about Cam Coleman. If you, Listen, you're talking about top ten prospects in the state of Alabama, and not just top ten prospects, but we're talking about at positions of value and wide receiver – an outside pass rusher slash linebacker. So those are premium positions. It is really hard to go into the state of Georgia and get the same equity that you're going to get right there in the state of Alabama. It is really hard to go into Florida and pluck a five-star wide receiver. But you got one in your backyard. You're Hugh Freeze in the offenses that you've run. You're Philip Montgomery in the offenses that you've run. You're Marcus Davis, and you're trying to put a skin on the wall to mark your name on. This is one you cannot miss. This is one that you need to lock in, just like Josh Aldridge and Ron Roberts did what they needed to do in Hugh Freeze to get Joe Phillips. I expect the same effort and whatever tactic was utilized or recruiting mm. pitch was used. I expect something similar with regard to Cam Coleman. I'm with you, Jeffrey. These are two, and we signaled them out very early. I think even back in January, we said, okay, guys, these are the two. These are the two that you got a foothold in with. These are the two that you got to land. However you fill out the rest of your class, um, you got to get those two. And so it's been big to have these guys on campus. I mean, Jalen Crawford, that's another statement win right there. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel Hill, that was a big visit for him. Who knows how that recruitment's going to shake out. Obviously, Kinsley Faustin just committed. Cohen Eccles, a big guard, center, or tackle from the state of Texas. Cole, you talked to him. You know this kid as well as anyone as far as – how the staff views him, how big was that visit? Uh, it was huge, man. I mean, that first of all, number one, uh, Texas A&M was very surprised that he did not leave that official visit committed to them. That was a surprise to them. It was a shock to them, and they didn't know why. And then, I, you know, they knew he was going to take an official to Auburn uh, close to the time that he took his Texas A&M official. And weren't too worried about it. But when he walked out of there uncommitted, they go, uh-oh. Yeah. Got to go to Auburn next. That's not good. He's supposed to be committed leaving here, right? So, um, we, I mean, look, everybody I've talked to around here, Cohen Eccles is top of the list. Oh. Uh, I don't know if he's number one, but he's up there. I mean, I think the quote that was given to me was something like, hey, you know, it is not very often when you get a guy that can play each position across the offensive line and as a coach, boy, that makes you feel better. Have a yeah, guy yeah. that can fill in anywhere you need to. Not just have a guy at each position, but one guy that could. And you know he's a good player. So, whatever, he doesn't have a ranking yet, whatever. Just look at the offers. Look at who's trying to bring him in. The LSU's trying to get an official from him still. Guys, this guy's the real deal. And we saw him. And we go, Psh. thought that was Dylan Wade getting off the elevator. I was going to say, is this a Dylan Wade type lineman? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a smaller guy. I, I wouldn't say smaller because he's got great length, believe it or not, for a six foot three guy. But undersized, I, I think it's fair to say a little bit undersized, but it doesn't matter. He's just so athletic and, uh, and powerful for that size and, mm. and lengthy. Those are the three things that you got to have if you're going to play, you know, if you're going to play SEC offensive line, I don't care what position, you got to have those things. Agreed, Cole. And I think there's even more versatility to his game because he can snap, he can play center. I think that's where the separator between a, a guy like him and Dylan Wade, where maybe Dylan's feet are a little bit better at this point and you can sure. play left tackle. I think this kid's versatility and athleticism allows him to play on the inside at center 
And that's the difference in between the two, but just an invaluable piece across the offensive line. Like you said, and in today's game, you're talking about always getting your top eight. And this is a guy that you can plug and play in any one of those three spots. And, and by the way, uh, I know y'all touched on Jamarian Burnett, Fat Burnett, shutting things down. I, from what I understand, and people that I've talked to close to his recruitment, I, I don't think that was just, uh, you know, hey, I wanted to put this out there. It was, hey, um, Florida State, Miami, Tennessee, these are schools still trying to get him on official visits and trying mm. to get him to, you know, think about decommitting. So, really, I consider this big news because okay. I was watching those schools as possible you know, visit places or, hey, we're, you know, going to try to flip him. So, I think that's huge news. There you go, man. There you go. There was some other news that just came out while we were recording. Chad Simmons just has a story, and it's kind of ties in with our Bryce Kane announcement, right? Bryce Kane, the interior guy, a slot guy who showed out at camp, um, was much better than Malcolm Simmons, who – was a fantastic athlete. I think we all heard fantastic athlete, wall, raw wide receiver right now. But Mario Craver, who was camped at Auburn earlier the day before, I believe, and Auburn looked at all three of these guys and said, we want Bryce Kane. They got him committed. Well, Mario Craver comes out today to Chad Simmons and says Auburn is in the lead. But I'm not going to make a decision anytime soon. And I think that might explain. Like I don't see Auburn pushing for him now with Bryce Kane in the boat. I think it's Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson until it's not. And then they decide what to do after that. A wide receiver. Yeah, it, it could be a, it could be a down the line thing, a decision that's made later on. Uh, yeah. I, I know that they like Mario Craver. There's no doubt they like Mario Craver. And by the way, they like Malcolm Simmons. Yes. Yeah. But when you're, when you're trying to narrow things down and you still have Perry Thompson who is here, I'm looking at him right now, by the way. Perry Thompson is here. Uh, and Cam Coleman, who just wrapped up his official visit. You just don't want to take somebody in those spots yet if you I still agree. have a shot at those guys. And, and if you're Auburn, you're thinking, Mario Craver, I think I could get him later. I really yeah. do. He seems to like Auburn. I mean, he said Florida was his leader. But we've kind of felt that Auburn was his leader the whole time, at least – for a while now. So uh, watch him down the road. I wouldn't say take eyes off of him yet. I really wouldn't. Okay. But we got to see how that plays out. I, right now, I think he's he's not going to end up in the class, but I do think it's fluid, to put it that way. You know, his teammate, Jalen Bakway, was there a couple weeks ago, or yeah, I think it was a couple weeks ago. But I thought it was interesting today in the on three rankings, Cam Coleman has overtaken Jalen Bakway as the number one player in the state of Alabama. That is correct. It, Rivals finally gave Cam his long due bump. He went from being a three star to a very high four star. I think he's the number twenty something player in the country. Twenty three. Yep. Which will be a five star once they sure. their rankings because I think they do just like everybody others. Every other site, the top thirty players are all five stars, right? But they just haven't gotten to. I mean, they yeah. On three is the same way. Right, they just haven't expanded their board yet to that point. So, on three, he's got Cam Coleman as number six. ESPN has him number seven. Uh, 24-7 has him number 17. And Rivals has him number 23, all top 25. So, he is a, what all they would call an on three, five-star plus. Consensus five-star. There you go. Uh, so, there you, and he's the number one player in the state of Alabama. ESPN has him number two. 24-7 has him number three. I'm guessing behind Jalen and Bakway, and they're really high on Joe Phillips, aren't they? Very. 24-7? Yeah, he's a top-10 player in the in state okay. of for them. I think number eight. I oh, okay, okay. Not number two. No, not number I'm trying two. trying to think who would 24-7 have in the state of Alabama. Um, Perry, uh, Perry Thompson, I believe. Oh, got, it is Perry Thompson. They've yep. got Jordan Ross number one. Yeah, uh, they're, they're very impressed with his <laughs> measurables and his raw athleticism. And Bakway at four. Riddick uh, at five. I do find it – it's always peculiar to me. Um, and, and I look, this is not me trying to take a shot at any recruiting service. Shit, but me neither. When the, when the top player in the state is not picking from a state – in-state university, it always makes you scratch your head a little bit of, okay, what do, what do these two schools know that the out-of-state schools don't? Good point. Uh, 
and, and that's not it, look. Everything I know is that Jordan Ross is a phenomenal kid. That's not me taking a shot at him, but it just makes me wonder what is it about his game that's unattractive to them, or they're not overly pursuing him. Yeah. Well, in Alabama's case, I've seen Jordan Ross uh, in a camp setting. He's got to put on some weight. There's no doubt about that. Whereas you'll look at Joe Phillips and and Jordan Ross next to each other, and you would probably think Joe Phillips is the more advanced guy uh, in the weight room. It just looks like he's a little bit more advanced with that uh, mm-hmm. development. But Jordan Ross has, you know, his high ceiling is Joe Phillips too. So it's, it's one of those things where if Alabama's not going to take him, it probably means that they don't think he's going to contribute right away. Right. He might be a down-the-line guy, and they just really don't have room for that. They, they, they're trying to take guys that are ready right now. Cam Coleman, I will say this. Uh, I'm going to try to get him on the phone uh, today, just get, get, just get him on the record about his visit. But just from talking to the guys that I did this morning, he might be in line for a bump on the hot board. Oh. Woo! Are we back to 60%? <sighs> if we don't do it now, you just got a new set. If it, you just got a new set. I did, I did, didn't I? <laughs> but don't do it, you know. If you do it, though. It's not because of it is not because of peer pressure. I promise you that. Right. I, right. Listen, <laughs> if you do it, I, I believe you. I put it that way. I 100 percent believe. You. I, I I feel better about him today than I did when I lowered him to 55, and I still felt good about him at 55. I just didn't feel as good as, as I did when I had him at 60. And I right. take this shit seriously, man. I do. Like it, it, I know there's not a lot of difference between 60 and 55, but there is for me. Yeah. I feel pretty confident if it's sixty or more. Fifty-five, I yeah. think it's kind of fifty-fifty, but I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the uh, the nod to Auburn right now, and that's kind of how I have Cam Coleman after this visit, after the conversation I had this morning, after the quotes that the source gave me. I think that I think I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna run I'm gonna do a couple more I'm gonna talk to a couple more people, but right now I'm leaning. I feel comfortable, uh, rock solid forty fifty-five, and um. Maybe 60. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to talk to some other dudes. All right, uh, Cole, Cole, I know you got to get back to camp. You got DeMarcus Riddick there, Perry Thompson, uh, some some Schley County kids. Yeah, uh, Amon Lane, even Malcolm Simmons is here, and he's showing out a little bit. So getting another chance to show coaches what he can do. I mean, me and Jay had have talked about this. Just don't rule him out, man. I mean, you just can't rule him out. That's the guy to watch down the stretch, I think. So, look, look, there's Perry Thompson, there's uh, Malcolm Simmons, there's Mario Craver, there's Cam Coleman, those four guys right there. If Auburn signs wide receivers other than those guys, would you be surprised? Yeah. I mean, why would you leave the state of Alabama this year? Don't have to. Receiver? No no reason at all to do that. Unless a sleeper emerges, and we've seen that happen. I mean, sure. if a guy sure. just sure. emerges that comes out of nowhere and you're like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? We, we yeah. weren't expecting this. Well, you know, this is something I tell people a lot. You still have an entire senior season to go for each one of these guys. Yes. That's a full football season. There's so much development that can be made from a junior to senior year uh, of football. I mean, that is where most of the development happens, if we're being honest. So, right. Think of the three players, the really players that skyrocketed up Auburn's board. One was a tight end that was committed to Vanderbilt, ended up signing – God, what was that kid's name? LSU, Camori and Pimpton. Right, you got it. Completely took off, unknown three-star, committed to Vandy, took off. Another one was the linebacker out of Memphis that ended up signing with, I think, Tennessee. Arian Carter? Yes. Damn, good guys. He was at one point leaning towards Alabama. Huge prospect that developed late. And then, obviously, the defensive back target that signed with us, who was a two-star nobody committed to Arkansas State. Ended up being a consensus four star by the time it's all done. Yep, Tyler Scott. Correct, Cole. Thank you for the assistance with all the names because you know I forgot every one of them, and I'm just Fire. leaning on you guys to slide that in. I'm on high alert right now, baby. I'm out here. We're on the field. Just got, just got the the Valentine's Day prediction to come true. Let's go. Let's go. Be on that, Cole. Get out there, run around, man. Appreciate you, big dog. All right, let me get at it. <laughs> All right, there's old Pinks in the live on set. Yeah, he is. Jay Head, I'm looking at the upcoming visitors list. We, the official visitors have left yet. Now we're looking towards this weekend. 
And if this has been a big weekend circled on the calendar for a while. It's kind of toned down a little bit um, just because, uh, let's see, not really. You got Perry Thompson going to stick around. Yes. Casey Poe, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. Yes. How about this DeAndre Carter cat coming from California? Ben Agamaya has been a stud with him. Same with Preston Tawamau. I don't know what I just said, but that sounded right. And Jamison Riggs. Yeah, Tawamua, I think is how it is. But, yes, and, 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 and well, and don't forget one more in Khalil House, who's not yet formally been introduced as an official visit, but it's looking that way. Well, they've got, I, was, I, was, I was looking – they've got him – or we, on three has him listed as a Saturday beginning his official visit on Saturday and all the rest on Friday, but I'll check on that. Khalil House, could he be next? You know, I talked to him back in uh, – I think it was March or April, and Auburn hadn't offered him yet, and he was basically said, "If Auburn did, I, I, this is where I want to go." I remember that because I've kept that one, and in fact, when I was putting my mock class together, I mentioned him as a guy like, "Look, don't forget this one." And this is a guy that went to the Under Armour camp. Cole watched him; he won MVP honors, was extremely impressive. A guy that played both the interior and right tackle positions. He comes to Auburn. What three, four months later? does the same thing in front of Jake Thornton, Hugh Freeze, Philip Montgomery, has a fantastic day. Hugh Freeze sees four plays and says, offer him. That's when you know you did something right that day. When the head coach can watch four snaps and say, yeah, give him an offer, you did something right that day. And I do love it to see kids being rewarded for those offers. Man, me too. That's, you know, that, that was something, and I'm not trying to bash the previous regime. You just didn't see as much of that. You always had a lot of kids. I mean, you had kids that came to camp, but you just didn't see those offers go out the way you have right now. And I think it probably speaks to the level of prospect that Freeze and them have gotten to come to campus. Somewhat, guys, they were just a little on the fence about. And they're saying they trust their eval enough to go ahead and say, let's let's get in the boat here. Let's go ahead and offer this guy. I like that. That'll be somebody to certainly keep an eye on. I'm trying to think – Casey Pogue, I'm going to be curious to see what he has to say. I'm obviously going to be curious to hear hear what these West Coast guys have to say. Uh, Jamison Riggs is another big one. I mean, look at the offensive linemen. Jamison Riggs, Preston Taumau, DeAndre Carter, Casey Pogue is the offensive line, and and Khalil House. Five, subjectively speaking, stud offensive linemen. Yes. Coming in for visits. Uh, And and then let's throw in Perry Thompson as well. We're at it. Malik Blockton was supposed to come in yesterday for an unofficial visit. I don't think that happened. Yeah, I think the storm situation probably prevented it. Was awful. Yeah. So I think he's actually there today. He camped. I know that Cole talked about uh, that Jeremy Garrett had a private workout with him and one other prospect from Lochapoca. I'm trying to think of it. I think it's Jamorian Payne is the young man's yep. name. So I had a private workout with the two of those, and the feedback on Blockton was really impressed with his quickness. You know, every time I watch Malik play, I just think about his brother. Because it, 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 he just looks like a carbon copy, just that blue collar. You can play them up and down the line. They can play on the interior. They can play out at the, at the end position. Just versatility. They're a guy that it, it, they're the type of player that it's not going to steal headlines when they commit to you, but you're going to be very fortunate that you've got them three, four years down the line um, when they've developed in the kind of prospect that they can be. But just hard worker, good kid, the kind of guy you got to fill your class with. Those are the core pieces, right? Mm-hmm. Not a flashy piece, but you got to have those core guys, those Michael Goggins types that are just going to do the dirty work, man. That are going to get things done on the line of scrimmage. Do you think that's the difference between Auburn in general, historically speaking, traditionally speaking, than uh, Alabama or Georgia? Does Alabama and Georgia, under Kirby Smart, under Nick Saban, do they have those core guys? I think they do. You know, you look at a guy like Jordan Davis that committed to UGA. He was a high three-star, low four. Weren't a lot of expectations in the recruiting world about him, but they did a good evaluation on that kid, and he turned into that kind of core player. But I I hear you in that most of the time, Alabama and Georgia, right or wrong, and maybe this is recruiting service bias or not. I don't honestly know where some of this is bumped to fives or, or, or high fours. You know, so they get the benefit of the doubt on the evaluation side of it. But Auburn's one of those kind of universities that has always had to develop some level of talent. Now, they can get star power. Don't get me wrong. Sure, sure. Shizik showed everybody that Mm -hmm. you can get star power to Auburn. 
but you still have to have guys that are just those blue collar mentality guys that are going to come in and they're going to work. You know, another guy that reminds me of that and a guy that we all have an active prediction on is D'Angelo Barber. You know, he's not the flashiest player, but when you watch his tape, you can't help but think of a guy, you know, like a Deshaun Davis. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't help but think of a guy like a Kurt Crane, mm. a guy that you're just not going to out tough. They're instinctive. They're tough. They're going to run and hit. Um, and they're so instinctive that they make plays with their head as much as they make plays, you know, with their physical attributes and talent. Um, and I just think Auburn has to always have a core group. You're going to get your Jamonte Wallers eventually. You're going to get your Cam Coleman's. You're going to have some flashy pieces, but you got to have those blue collar guys that are willing to come to work with their lunch pail and grind, man. That's just how it is. Um, and, and Auburn's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And this isn't me poor mouthing anybody. No, I but agree I, with you. When, when Auburn makes an evaluation on the guy and they really like him, the recruiting services are looking at that and saying, all right, we know this kid's going to be a four-star because Auburn offered. It's never been that way, man. Okay. I was going to say, they have those guys. They're just ranked a lot higher. Correct. They have them. They're just ranked a lot higher, uh, right or wrong. I don't right. know. You know what I mean? I'm not in the rankings industry, and I think it's a really hard job. I'm going to be honest. Uh, well, uh, let's see. what um, What's next? What's next? I think they're going to try to keep this momentum, go momentum going. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know that I don't expect Cam Coleman to make a decision anytime soon. Um, <clears throat> but some of those guys. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to pull up Ke uh, Cole's article from today on, on Auburn Live on three. And let me just point out again, while I got a chance right now, while we're looking this up, mm -hmm. dude, it's, 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 it's Auburn Live on three. If you don't have a membership right now, it's uh, it's practically free. It's one dollar for the next three months or 50 bucks for the next year. And uh, so after that three months, I, I know people are going, well, why don't I just get three months four times? That's not like that. So I think it's after the one, after the uh, three month for one dollar is up, I think it's nine ninety nine a month. So it'd be cheaper in the long run to go ahead and get that year for 50 bucks, man. You can't beat that. Uh, and, uh, and there's also a uh, Father's Day special, man. I got some gift certificates if you want to give, give, give away a membership. So uh, we got the best community, dude. We're going to get some high batches out here here in a little bit. But uh, anyways, give us a try. Give, give us a try. Auburn Live on three one dollar for the next three months, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the corner. Our famous, not infamous, but famous. There you go, message board. All right, Jay, what are we doing? So we're we're taking a look at Cole's prediction of who could be next. Who I could be next? What everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. And I put a post up on the board of you know we talked about it on the show. Can Auburn get to twelve commits by the time Tony yep. Leather? All right. And I don't think there's any question now after the last couple of days that Auburn can get to 12. But let's take a peek um, at Cole's story and I'll see where where my list kind of meets his list. Or if you have any disagreements on somebody that you think could be different in the boat. The only thing I'm seeing right here is and the only thing questionable is and, and somebody had on, on the corner had a fantastic suggestion. And I thought, man, this would be as helpful to me as it would be to anybody. But sure. the top targets, even on the hot board, <clears throat> just take the hot board list, right? right. Guys that, that are going to visit. That's that's basically the hot board. Is, I think these guys might visit. Yeah. If they don't, if I don't think they're visit, I don't care if Auburn's offered them or not. <clears throat> but I take all those guys, then put on the timeline the latest, according to them, of their timeline in the fall, end of summer, end of July, yes, December, July the eighth. Boom, boom, boom. I thought, man, that would be fantastic. So that's the only thing when I'm looking at this list that I do not know. Um, for sure. Like, like D'Angelo Barber. I think I got you covered. He's going to be the end of June after he officially visits to Arkansas. Okay. So that, that's one where Travis Williams is still actively recruiting. That's not one that you should sleep on by any means. I do believe Auburn is the leader. That's what he told Cole Pinkston. Yeah. I think that's what he's echoed to you as well, Jeffrey. But that would probably be the next guy to commit, if I had to guess, would be D'Angelo Barber. Is he a four-star? I think with on three, he's a three-star with he Rivals. Is. Four. He's a, yeah, Rivals likes him. Yeah, Rivals Rival. likes him a good bit. Everybody and else I, has got him as a three. But that's one of those kind of guys. I mean, it, Auburn's just had, many, had so many linebackers like him that have gone on to be successful. Um, it's a T-Wheel special, you know? It, it is. Travis doesn't miss on many linebackers. 
Unless it's like a Josh Marsh or. Yeah, look. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw it. I saw yeah. it register. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Um, but you can tell why he loves him because he sees a quicker Deshaun Davis. That's what he oh, sees yeah. when he's looking at him. He's seeing a more athletic Deshaun, but a guy that's absolutely instinctive, can play sideline to sideline, run and hit. Not the best athlete in the world, but that's not how he's going to beat you anyway. He's just instinctive. I love Jalen Crawford. I think Auburn's the team to beat for him. I know he's going to LSU at some point, but, dude, I talked to his dad. I love his dad. Uh, his dad. Man, I, Jay, I'm to the point now in my career where uh, obviously I'm, I'm relating more with the, the parents. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, Johnny, you know, hey, where's your dad at, big dog? <laughs> you know? And uh, Jalen Crawford's got an awesome dad. I talked to him and, you know, just kind of rapping with him about it. And he's very involved in the kid's life and uh, he works a lot. And he wants to watch his kid play ball. He wants to be able to drive an hour and a half down I-85 and watch his kid play ball every weekend. I think that's going to be a huge deal. I think Auburn's – I think Auburn feels really good about where they are. I think D'Angelo Barber, Jalen Crawford. Now, I think Jalen Crawford said he was going to do it end of July or – That's correct. He's going to do it end of July, um, probably right before Big Cat is what it looks like. Mm. So that's another guy. I feel very good about that one. I, I actually spoke to a high school coach out of the state of Georgia that um, that feels comfortable saying that he thinks that that Auburn is a clear leader for him, and that you're right. That family is very important to the Crawfords, um, and being able to build, still be involved in his son's life. You know, it's, it's why Atlanta's got to be such a pivotal piece for Auburn. Mm. They're just so yes. close, and there's such a dearth of talent there, or a plethora of talent there that. You know what I mean? It's 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 just got to be a part of your recruiting hotbed. It's got to be. Um, Cohen Eccles was a big week for him. Now, obviously, that's going to be a hard one. Getting a kid out, yeah. Of, getting a kid out of the state of Texas. Um, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not questioning Jake Thornton. Okay, right now, right now, Jake Thornton has my respect. I'm interested to see which way this one goes, and I know they love that kid. Wyatt Simmons. That's another. Clemson Auburn battle, in my opinion, with Arkansas also in the mix. It would be really great to uh and look, as far as that one goes, um, he's another underrated linebacker, but he's somebody that Clemson absolutely pushed for. Clemson is ID yeah. of talent at a very high clip. Okay. If this kid commits, I think Auburn fans should be excited about that one. And I think Josh Aldrin has has a very big connection there that could play in our favor. Uh, Malik Blockton set to commit. Is it July the 14th? I think that sounds right. I think July it's, the 8th, July the 8th, July the 8th for Malik Blockton is when he's going to commit. Reese Baker, I think we all feel good there. When is he going to pull the trigger though? He's not coming in for an OV until the fall. Will Auburn be patient and wait? Will Reese be patient and wait? Will Auburn say, Come on, let's go? Well, you know, right. It, will Auburn say, all right, man, it's it's time or, yeah. or, or we're moving on? Khalil House, you, I think Ole Miss feels very good about where they sit with him right now if he OVs to Auburn this weekend. And I think all intentions are that he that he's planning to. I think Auburn can win this recruitment if he wants to. I honestly believe that. And that's not me taking a shot at Ole Miss. That's just I don't believe Ole Miss is coming into South Georgia and plucking a kid that Auburn wants. I just don't believe that. No, I hear you. Especially the kid that said, I want to go to Auburn. Yeah. A couple of 2025s that I, I I think I posted on the bunker, I mean the bunker, the uh, the corner a couple of weeks ago when he came up to camp, Alvin Henderson. Uh, you know, we saw uh, Anthony Rogers, Turbo Rogers, commit to Alabama, the former <clears throat> Pike Road standout, yeah. and now at IMG, and I was thinking maybe that's a good deal for Auburn and Alvin Henderson – um, I think Alvin Henderson and Cole's hearing the same thing. We're independently hearing different things. I mean, said the same thing. Alvin Henderson could pop pretty quickly. Now, then he did tweet. He must have got so Cole officially put his prediction in for Auburn. Obviously, he mm -hmm. garnered some buzz. Alvin Henderson probably saw it and said, "Hey guys, I'm not leaning anywhere. My recruitment's wide open." But we've seen that. Well, you know, maybe the kid felt like he had to do that. I still think Auburn's the big time team to beat for him. I think it's just a matter of when, not if. And then Grayshawn Swain. Now, this is a kid, teammates with Jaden Lewis. 
who uh, Jaden Lewis has said that uh, this kid really likes Auburn. Uh, he's a 2025 edge, and he is very high on Auburn. He could commit as well. So it's a couple of 2025 guys to watch uh, as far as a potential next commitment. But I, th- I, I, I think Jay Head, Jalen Crawford, uh, Malik Blocked, Reese Baker, Khalil House, all these guys, to be honest with you, except for Cohen Eccles. Yep, and I'll give you one in the replacement of Cohen Eccles, and one that's on my list. And because I was told that he wants a June July commitment time frame, that's what he's on record as saying is Jamison Riggs. And he oh, will yeah. have completed all of his visits. He will have gone to Clemson, Georgia Tech, and Auburn, and will be making a final decision after that. I like where Auburn stands on this one. Now, can we knock it home on the OV? I'm banking that we will. I think that would be a big piece for us as a swing lineman. A target for Walker White that he's been working on from very early on and a guy that I think that's bonded with him relatively well. And if you get a Jamison Riggs in the boat, does that help you with a Casey Poe? Mm. Talking about kids cut from the same cloth. Yep. So that would be interesting. That might start a little bit more momentum. Ah, man, lots going on. We we will be following it all at Auburn Live on three. Uh, Jay Head, you have any – how about you this week? I do. Uh, I got two of them. The first one is Good Fan. Oh, yeah. Um, Good Fan, you know what this is for, but love you, brother, all your contributions to the board. Um, You do a lot of great things behind the scenes, so thank you for all the things that you do. And I'm going to give a how about you to Charlie Five. Okay. Charlie told me that I had some uh, – that I needed to start getting my own theme music when we have a commitment pop off, and he'll know what this is about. So, uh, Charlie, how about you, brother? Oh, Chuck. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've, got, I've got a few. i got a – how about you, the baked ram? Man, he had a clutch post one night. I can't remember what it was. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, how about you to, to the nightman cameth? Yes. How about you to nickel package? Okay. How about you to Robert Dale one fantastic poster? How about you to E Saint one? How about you to BBP times three, son? Over the last mm-hmm. over the last week, it was I, I, I was screenshotting. You know my how about you? I, I counted them up. They had BBP screenshotted three times. Very rare. How about you, big dog? To BBP. How about you? How about you? How about you to Obliterati? Yes. For uh, <laughs> that picture, of, that meme of Cole in the uh, in the Spider Man suit. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, that was funny. Oh uh, man, how about you? How about you to PGA Train Two? Not to be confused with PGA Train One. How about you to Bug Matt? How yes. about you to First String? Who? Listen to what I had to say about Miss Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group. Gave her a call. Making it happen, son. Listen, I want him to call in with his uh, testimony when he gets through with this. There we go. I like that. And uh, also, if you're uh, looking for a realtor in and around Auburn, Appalachia, Lee County, Alabama, give her a call. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. Final shout out, or uh, how about you, goes to Brett Whiteside oh, yes. on to victory. Yes. How about you? Oh, Big dog. How about you to all the donors? Listen, if Auburn loses that one, it's not a it's not a good show today. The vibe no. on here is not good. Um, so how about you, big dog? How about you? What you got, Jay Head? One more because I couldn't let this pass. It actually even made it, it made its way into our group chat. How about you to Johnny Knox 07 for, oh, the, for, seven, sure. for the seven faces of Jeffrey Lee <laughs> during his rant the other night it was absolutely hilarious. I literally almost fell off the can laughing at that when I was, yeah. when I was reading the board. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. Man. It caught me the right way, bro. <laughs> Oh, it's the quality entertainment you find on the corner, and it's all to you, offering to you for one dollar right now. Go get it, man! Auburn Live on three, one dollar. Hey, listen, we appreciate everybody. We're going to be back Sunday. Jay, head, you got something else? Nope, be back Sunday. Okay, Sunday we're going to go live, man. Y'all call in with those uh, comments and call us and let us know how you feel about this recruiting class shaping up. Got to be some excitement, and uh, I know we're excited because it's a lot.
lot more fun to cover uh, positive news than it is to cover negative news. I promise you that. And uh, so we're always looking for positive news, just like today with Joe Phillips. And uh, we'll be looking for some more. Hey, stay tuned for the Cam Coleman update. Hopefully, hopefully we can get that to you soon. And then, of course, this weekend, as we've mentioned already, going to be a huge, huge weekend for official visits. Cole's got Perry Thompson, got Demarcus Riddick on campus today, as well as some others. We're going to have updates from that. Uh, all at Auburn Live on three. Hey, appreciate everybody listening. We appreciate everybody watching. And look for a Sunday for Zach in the back, for Jay Head, for Cole over there on campus. I'm Jeffrey Lee. Y'all say that left lane. See ya.